Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, the last time we were together, we were looking at multiple step equations, and I told you it's really not that difficult because honestly, it really is not that difficult. Uh, when you're solving a multiple step equation, remember we distribute if necessary, we combine like terms, and then we solve. And we looked at these two examples 4m minus the quantity 5 minus the quantity of 5 times quantity 3m plus 10 equals 126, and 91 equals negative 7 times the quantity 3a minus 1. Remember, we use the distributive property to distribute the numbers that are outside of the parentheses into everything that is in the parentheses. We did that, we combine like terms, and then we solve using SADMAP. Now, I also asked you to try these six equations in your notebook. Um, you can either put the answers into the text box and send those to me, or take a picture of your work, send that to me. Because today, we're looking for the steps in order to solve equations that have variables on both sides of the equal sign. And again, we're starting by distributing if necessary, we combine like terms, but then there's an extra step here where we have to move variables all to one side. So this is over, remember this is to one side of the equal sign. So we need all the variables on one side, all of the numbers on another side, and then solve. And does it matter if the variable is on the left side of the equal sign or the right side? No only that they are all together. So we're gonna start with 5y minus eight equals 3y plus 12. Now I'm gonna, let's see, clear, clear all the drawings so that I'm going with a fresh page. So we have five my, minus eight equals 3y plus 12. My first step, do I have anything to distribute? No. Remember, this is only if necessary. There's nothing that it, nothing in parentheses, so I don't have to use the distributive property. So I move to my next step, combine like terms. Do I have anything on this side of the equal sign or on this side of the equal sign that I can combine? No, there's not, because I only have two terms and an operation on the left side of my equal sign and two terms and an operation and one is a coefficient with a variable minus a constant equals a coefficient times a variable plus a constant. So I don't have anything with the same terms, with the same variables or the same exponents. So I skip over step two and then I go to step three, move the variables to one side. Now this is where I'm going to be using SADMAP. So I'm just gonna put that right here because it's a lot easier, honestly, to type that in than it is to write it. So I'm going to move, I decided I'm gonna move my variables to this side over here and I'm gonna move my numbers over here. So in order to move the variables from one side or the other, I'm going to subtract and add first. So I have a positive 5y on one side and a positive 3y on the other. It really does not matter if I decide to move my 5y over here or to move my 3y over here, but what I do as far as moving the variables is going to determine how I move my numbers next. So I decided since I'm going to, I'm going to move my variables to the left side. So I have to do the opposite. Three Y, I'm gonna subtract three Y from both sides. Three Y minus three Y, those cancel out. Five Y minus three Y equals a positive y positive 2y minus 8 equals 
positive 12. And again, I'm trying to type and trying to write using only these two fingers. So if it looks like my three-year-old daughter is doing it, that's why. So I'm left with 2y minus 8 equals a positive 12. Now, since I have all of my variables on one side, now I'm going to solve my two-step equation. So I have 2y minus 8. So I'm going to do the opposite of subtraction, which is addition. So I'm going to add 8 to both sides, which leaves me on this side, those 8, negative 8 and positive 8 cancel out. That leaves me with 2y equals, and then 12 plus 8 is 20. So I added and subtracted. What am I going to do next? Right, multiply and divide. So I'm multiplying 2 times y equals 20. So I'm going to then divide both sides by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And 1 times anything is itself. So that leaves me with y equals 20 divided by 2 is 10. And I know that this works out because 5 times 10 is 50 minus 8, which is 42. 3 times 10 is 30 plus 12, which is 42 as well. So 42 equals 42. This is an example of an equation that has variables on both sides that works out evenly, works out with one possible solution. All right, let's do one more example. Uh, let me see what we got here. All right, and we got a couple of cop. We have a couple of options. Either 6x plus 14 equals 12 minus 8x, or 7k equals 3k minus 36. I'm going to do this one instead. So I'm going to start. Do I have to distribute anything for this one right here? No, I do not. I cannot combine like terms. So that's step number two I'm done away with. Leave me with step number three, move the variables to one side. Well, I already have 7k by itself on the left side of my equal sign. So I'm going to move my positive 3k over. And in order to do that, remember, anytime we're moving a term over an equal sign, we have to do the inverse, the opposite. So I'm going to subtract 3k from both sides. Excuse me, 3k. So undo. That's 3k. 3k minus 3k is 0k. And then 7k minus 3k equals 4k. Yeah, that looks bad, but oh well, we're still learning. 4k equals negative 36. So negative 36 equals 4k. All the variables have been moved to one side. I'm going to solve what is now a one-step equation. So 4k equals negative 36. That is really 4 times k equals negative 36. So the opposite of addition is subtraction. The opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by positive 4. So negative 36 divided by positive 4. Remember, a negative divided by a positive. Since they are opposite signs, that means that my answer is going to be negative. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So that leaves me with k equals negative, and then 4 times what is 36? Correct. 4 times 9 is 36. So if 4 times 9 is 36, 4 times negative 9 is negative 36. Pretty simple, right? Again, we're doing this as practice because this is going to lead into what we will be doing 
next. So for today, what I want you to do on the very next slide, I'm going to clear all this. On the next slide, you try. So I want you to copy down the following equations into your notebooks and solve using those same steps. Distribute, if necessary, combine like terms, move the variables to one side, and then solve. And looking at these six equations, only one is going to require you to do step one. Number six is the only one with parentheses, so that's the only one that is going to require you to use the distributive property. There are a couple I see on here where you are going to have to combine like terms, but for all of them, you are going to have to do number three, which is move the variables to one side. Ooh, that looks, that looks different. So for all of them, you have to move variables to one side, and it doesn't matter if on the equal side, if you're moving them over here, or if you're moving them over here, it really doesn't matter. But what does matter is when, when you decide if you're moving all the variables to the left or to the right, that your goal is to get the variable by itself on that side and all of the numbers by themselves on the other side. So there you go.